Hi and welcome to this week's vlog in which I'm going to share a free tutorial so that you can make your own beautiful tiered skirt for the summer. So this vlog that I'm sharing today is part of the So Frugal 2024 challenge. Now this is a wonderful challenge. I have participated in this every year. I shall share the vlogs below in the description box that I have already put out over the last few years, which contain all sorts of free patterns that you could sew up this month if you would like to. But this year I thought I would do a little something different. Before I do that, I'm not going to go into the rules of the challenge this year. I'm sure if you're following along with the So Frugal Challenge, you will have watched so many videos already all about the challenge. The most important thing, I guess, is that you need to sew up a free pattern using fabric from your stash and share that on Instagram on March the 31st using the hashtag SoFrugal2024. Now, if you want any more detail, please do watch the vlogs by Ruan, who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and Sam, who's Frugalissima. Those two wonderful ladies run this challenge every year, and they have got fantastic detailed vlogs outlining the challenge and sort of the rules or the guidelines for the challenge. So I shall link those in the description box below if you want more details about the challenge. So I have shared before in past years videos with all sorts of ideas about patterns I'd like to make for a capsule wardrobe or lots of different ideas for sewing for children and for adults using free patterns. This year I thought I would share a free pattern because I have seen over the internet and a lot of different pattern companies putting out beautiful patterns for tiered summer skirts. And really and truly, this is one you can very easily make for yourself without a pattern and with just a couple of very simple measurements. So, what I thought I would do is start by sharing the fabric that I'm planning to use for my tiered summer skirt, and it is this fabric here. Now, I bought this from Sony Sunshine when I saw it as a dead stock release, so there isn't any of this left. However, if you want to make one of these skirts for yourself, I think a viscose or a very lightweight cotton lawn perhaps are the best fabrics for this, but definitely a viscose or a lightweight fabric will just give you that beautiful swish that these lovely long tiered skirts uh, need. Now this is a viscose twill I think, so it's a slightly heavier weight of viscose, but I do think it will be really lovely in the summer months. It has a lot of movement and drape, which I think will work beautifully for this tiered skirt. And the other thing is I really love the colours of the florals in this print, but I'm not sure it will look that great right next to my face. So I think as a skirt it will be perfect and I do have about three meters of this so plenty to make a tiered skirt. You do need a little bit of fabric because there is a lot of gathering involved in making this skirt so it takes a surprising amount of fabric. To go with this I do have in my stash a beautiful raspberry colored merino jersey. So this one here now I think that is such a gorgeous color and actually I think it goes really well with this fabric. There are some of those pinks in the fabric so as a top I think that would work really well and if I have time I would like to sew that up into the free Blommer tank by Paradise Patterns and I think that would go really really well with this skirt and it's another fantastic free pattern. Let's get on with how to make the skirt. The first thing you're going to need is your waist measurement. So take your measuring tape, measure around your natural waist. That's where your hands naturally sort of just sit when you go to put your hands on your hips, I suppose. If you prefer your skirts to sit lower, you may want to measure slightly lower, but I do like mine sitting on my natural waist and my waist measurement is currently 30 inches. So that's the starting measurement for me. Now the first thing we're going to do is cut out the waistband piece. Now I need my waistband ultimately to be 30 inches, so I'm going to cut two pieces of 30 inch long fabric because I obviously want that to gather up nicely when I put the elastic into it. The elastic I'm using is about 1.5 inches wide, so I'm going to add another 0.5 half of an inch onto that because that's my seam allowance for this pattern. So I'm going to cut a piece of fabric that is four inches wide so I can fold that over at the top and 30 inches long and that's going to form my waistband piece. The next piece I'm going to cut is the first tier of my skirt. Now I'm going to cut two of this piece and I want it to be 30 inches wide and I want it to be 15 inches long. I want that first tier to just sit past my bottom so it's not hitting at the widest part of me. So I used my measuring tape, took it down to where I would like it to sit and I'm going to cut that 15 inches long by 30 inches wide. And again, you need two of that pattern piece so that it will gather in nicely. Now, in terms of the next tier, you can choose how 
gathered or not gathered you would like this to be. Generally you want to multiply the width of the previous tier by about 1.5 to get a nice ratio of gathers in the next tier. However if you like a really really gathered skirt you may want to multiply it by 2 or even 2.5 for a very very gathered look. I'm going to go with 1.5 inches on this skirt. So for the second tier you want to take the width of the previous tier. Now the previous tier for me is 31 inches. Now my waist is 30 inches but I needed to add a little bit in terms of seam allowance so I added an inch uh, so for half an inch on either side for seam allowance. So then for my second tier I'm going to multiply that by 1.5 to give me a measurement of 46.5 inches wide by about 12 or 13 inches long. Do remember that when you've gathered it all up you will lose half an inch at the top and half an inch at the bottom so you do need to make sure you include that seam allowance in your calculations. So for the third tier, exactly the same as before, I'm going to take the width of the previous tier, so 46 and a half inches, multiply that by 1.5. Now that gives me 70 inches wide. Now I'm pretty sure this fabric isn't 70 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is take that measurement and double it because that's the full uh, width of that piece that I'm wanting to cut and that gives me 140 inches. I'm going to divide that into threes which gives me roughly 47 inches. So I, I need three pieces then of 47 inches and then I'm going to make the length of those piece pieces 12 inches and that gives me enough for a nice deep hem as well at the bottom. So those are the pieces that I'm going to cut out. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about measurements or lengths or things like that, do pop me a comment in the comments box below and I'd be happy to try to help with that. But those are the dimensions of the pieces that I'm going to be cutting. Now, one quick word of warning. It is so easy to get all of these pieces very, very muddled up. So what I do like to do is I take a piece of washi tape and I just put a number on it, one, two, or three, and I stick that on the fabric and then I will know exactly which tier that fabric <laughs> belongs to. Because once you've cut out all these rectangles, believe me, they can all get into a muddle awfully quickly. So if you haven't got washi tape, you can use masking tape, you can use a chalk pen, you can use anything that you have in your sewing room that will wash off or rub off to mark these pattern pieces so that you know which is which. Just a word of warning, if you do use friction pens, they are fantastic, they can iron away, but they can also leave a mark on your fabric. So please always test any kind of tape or marker or iron away pen or wash away marker on a scrap piece of fabric before you do use it on your good fabric. Well, that took a while because this fabric is beautiful but so slippery, but I have got everything cut out. So I have got two pieces for tier one, two pieces for tier two, three pieces or rectangles for tier three, and then I've got my long pieces for the waistband. Now, what I'm going to do to start off with is to sew the short edge of each rectangle together for the tier. So here are my two rectangles for tier one. I'm going to open them out and sew together these short sides to make one long tube. So I'm going to do that for tier one, tier two, and then join those three pieces together for tier three. Okay, so now we have three tubes of fabric that look a little bit like this. This is the smallest one, this is tier one, so you can see it's quite big. Now, this eventually is going to gather into the waistband. So what I'm gonna do is put two rows of gathering stitches at the top of this piece of fabric, so at the top of tier one. Now, I know there are lots of ways to do gathering, Call me old fashioned, I prefer the method where I'm going to set my machine to the longest stitch length that it has. I'm going to pop in a contrasting thread so it's easy to remove at the end. And I'm going to sew one row of stitches uh, near to the edge and then another one about a centimeter away so that eventually when I come to sew the two parts together, uh, the stitch will go between the two lines of gathering threads and I'll hopefully have a very neat gathered waistband or tear into the waistband at the top of my skirt. So that's what I prefer to do. There are times when I will sew three rows of gathering stitches. That's often when I'm doing like an heirloom dress or something like that. This fabric 
phrase like a beast. It is quite hard to handle and I don't want to handle it too much or I'm going to get a really frayed edge, especially with gathering it in. So I'm just going to use two rows of gathering stitches this time. So I'm going to put those at the top of each tier, at the top of tier one to gather that into the waistband, at the top of tier two which is going to gather into tier one, and at the top of tier three which will gather into tier two. So I'm going to pop those gathering stitches in now. Now on your machine you might like to check what your stitch length is. On my machine mine is five, that's the biggest stitch length I can go to. You may need to fiddle around a little bit with the tension if you can't easily pull the bobbin thread on the back side of your fabric but it should be fine as long as you put that stitch length to its longest possible length. Right, so gathering threads and then we'll start putting the tiers of the skirt together. Right, so we have tier one, which is gathered. This is going to go into the waistband, so I'm going to put it up that way so I know where I am. And then I'm just going to fold this in half so that I can roughly work out where the midpoint is on this section of fabric and just pop a pin in it. Then I'm just going to put that to one side and then here is my gathered second tier. Now I have still got on these my pieces of washi tape just so that I do know exactly which tier is which. Then I'm going to mark the half points on this in the same way. Right, then I'm going to match up the side seams with the side seams here and the midpoints with the midpoints and then I'll start gathering that together. Obviously I want right sides together so I'll flip this in the other way to make it easy to gather. Then I'm going to start just gently pulling on these gathering threads to gather the second tier to the same size as the bottom of the first tier. Right, so that is tier number two attached to tier number one. I mean, it looks a bit <laughs> crazy at this point, but there is the tier attached to tier one. Obviously, this top of tier one is going to be gathered into the waistband, so don't worry about that. But there are the gathers. Now, this fabric, honestly, I think I said it frayed a lot. It frays a lot. So I very carefully just did that tear and then overlocked it all. It did take me a while to take the gathering threads out because it is quite a fine fabric and I didn't want to tear it. We can't see that, but it is overlocked and sewn down and all neat and tidy. But um, the next tear is obviously a lot bigger. So I do from time to time quite like to work on the floor and then I can really spread out. I do have a cutting table. It's an antique one though, so it's not enormous and I do have my machines on it. So when I really need to spread out, I do tend to work on the floor, which is great. So I think I'm heading off now to do the school run, but I will pop back up here tonight because I really want to get tier three attached and then tomorrow I will just need to do the hem and the waistband. So this really is a perfect beginner project. I think if you did do it in a viscose or a lightweight lawn, it would work beautifully and it would probably be a lot easier to handle. I think the difficulty with this make or perhaps what's taken me a long time in terms of making this is really negotiating with uh, the fabric. It's beautiful and it's so soft and it's going to be really gorgeous to wear, but it is just takes a lot of time really to sew it up. So that's where we are at for now. Like I say, I'm hoping to pop back up here tonight and sew on the third tier and then tomorrow it will be the waistband and the hem left to go. Good 
morning. So I did manage to get the third tier onto the skirt. It's probably a bit hard to see, but you've got a fairly long first tier. There's the second tier and there's the third tier. Lightly gathered in really at 1.5 but I'm really pleased with it. Now, when I put it on my waist, it does reach the floor, but that's fine. What I'm gonna do next is attach the waistband, gather this tear into the waistband. Then I'm gonna try it on and decide how much I want to hem that third tear. I did leave enough for about an inch hem, so I was gonna fold it up by a quarter of an inch and then an inch, so I have left plenty on that bottom tier to hem it. I could also, I guess, take a little bit off the top tier if I want to reduce the length of that top tier down. So I am going to share with you next how to make the waistband. So in the instructions, I talked about cutting two of the 30 inch long by four inch wide pieces. In terms of the elastic measurements, just do what is best for you and your comfort level. I have IBS, so I do struggle a little bit with um, bloating and things at various points in the day. So although the suggestion is to take your waist measurement, subtract two inches and then use that as your elastic measurement, I'm actually going to go with a 30 inch elastic measurement, which is the same as my waist. But what I like to do is overlap the elastic by an inch each side anyway, so that I can really securely put those two ends together inside the waistband. So because of that, I'm going to lose an inch either side anyway. So I am going to cut the elastic at 30 inches, feed that into the waistband, and then uh, I will close that off with an inch overlap either side. So I think that will be fine, but what you can do is cut your elastic to the length that you think you want, even slightly longer if you want to check, and then just wear it around your waist for a little bit with a safety pin, closing it up so that you can just check the comfort level for yourself, and then before you finish up the waistband, what I like to do sometimes is to baste the elastic closed and then try it on uh, and just double check again the length of that elastic and check that it's comfortable for me. Always best to do that before you close up the waistband and top stitch it down and things uh, because it's a lot harder to take out afterwards. So next step, waistband and elastic and then uh, we'll be almost finished. I want to pin the waistband on to the top of the skirt just as it is I'm going to sew it on like this and leave a space for the elastic and then I'm going to overlock the edges together just because this is such a shifty and light fabric that's how I'm going to sew the waistband on but the skirt is slightly larger so I'm just going to pull on the gathering threads a very little bit just so that it fits into the waistband piece and then we can sew it on Now that's all pinned, I'm going to take it to the machine and sew the seam closed with the waistband and I'm going to leave a gap so that I can then feed the elastic through the opening in the waistband. Okay, so we're on day three of the process. You'll notice I'm wearing another dress. So this is day three of sewing. So if you are a beginner and you're trying out this tutorial, please be rest assured that even for someone who is an experienced dressmaker and has sewn for quite a few years, sewing does take time. So this is day three. It's a very simple project. It is a tiered skirt, but even simple projects do take time. And I do sew in small increments of time around my children and what I'm doing with them. So. Yeah, I think sometimes we look at Instagram and YouTube and feel like things come together in an afternoon, but they don't. So anyway, we are here. I have done the hem. You will have just seen me folding that up and hemming that. I have decided for now to keep the skirt very long, so it will be swishing on the ground when I walk. 
probably won't be able to wear this one on the bike but it will be nice on a summer day and I can pair that with a long black top and boots for the winter. Now I have to say having tried it on I do think the first tier is quite long. I took some inspiration from the high street where they do have quite a long first tier but at some point I may go in and shorten that. Now do feel free to use this pattern that I have shared today as a jumping off point. Make the tiers as long as short as you like. I just measured from my waist to the floor and then kind of divided that by three. But if you wanted a shorter top tier, you could easily do that and make the bottom two longer. Also bear in mind, I am only five foot five, so if you are longer than that, or taller than that should I say, you may wish to make perhaps your second and third tier a little longer as well. So these measurements really are a guide, but you can make it to your own specifications and to make it how you would like to wear it. So we have the elastic in, you will have seen me sewing that down and overlocking that edge and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch this elastic down. The trouble with elastic waistbands is they can fold over or the elastic inside folds over and gets bunched up which is terribly frustrating. So there are two options. You can stitch in the ditch where the waistband seam is on either side and that will give you a little bit of support and stop that waistband twisting too much or what I prefer to do which is I'm going to sew two lines of top stitching along this elastic and that will really keep it secure and in place and there will be no shifting around which is my preference. Now because my elastic is 1.5 inches that makes it really simple I'm going to sew two lines of stitches one at 0.5 of an inch or half an inch and then the other at one inch so I'm going to line that up with my markings on my sewing machine and just pop those in. What I will do before I start is I will put some pins in so I am going to put a pin here at the seam on either side where I sewed up that waistband and I'm going to put those two pins together like so and then I'm going to put pins in here so I've basically quartered my waistband and I've put pins in at the quarter points trying to keep that fabric flat and pulled out of the way because the reason I'm doing that is then when I sew it I can pull the waistband elastic taut and have that fabric flat on the top and I can know that at the end because of where I've put those pins the gathering is still going to be even. If you don't pin it the difficulty is you may stretch the elastic and you may find that at the end the gathers in that waistband are not even. So they are even at the moment I'm just going to pop in those pins at quarter points. If you would like to do put another pin in between so you're pinning then I guess at eighths just to give you a little bit more control over the gathering on that elastic waistband. that's it it is done here it is with the top stitched waistband I love it I do wonder whether I might shorten this top tier at some point but for now I'm gonna leave it as it is I hope you enjoyed seeing that tutorial and I hope you have a go at making one of these skirts for yourself do tag me on Instagram I'm so Amelia over there if you make one for yourself I would love to see it because it really is so easy. You don't need a pattern for this at all. If you have a pattern that has a tiered skirt, for example, like the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra or the Chalk and Notch Shade Dress, you can also use those pattern pieces to guide the length of your tiers or even to cut the tiers out and then just add the waistband on yourself if you don't prefer to draft the length of the rectangles. It really is so simple and I hope you enjoy sewing it. It was, like I say, a different video for me to share as part of So Frugal this year. I just thought, I'm sure you've seen so many fantastic recommendations from all the lovely vloggers of free patterns. So I thought I would just do something different today and share a free pattern with you. 
So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have enjoyed my video, do check out the other wonderful vloggers who are sharing their ideas of free sewing patterns this month. So today the other vlogger I'm sharing the day with is Sam, who is Sequin Girly Create. So if you've not yet seen her video, do pop over to her channel after this and watch her video for her ideas for Sew Frugal 24. I hope you'll get involved with Sew Frugal this year. It's such a great challenge. It's such a fantastic opportunity to use up fabric that's been sitting in your stash and to take advantage of all the fantastic free patterns that are out here on the internet. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy making your own tiered skirt this spring and summer and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Goodbye!